morning, everybody. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. We've been given a beautiful day today. If you would take the church hymnal, the church hymnal. Let's stand and sing number 398. Number 398, every day with Jesus. Number 398 in the church hymnal. singing has been canceled for now. June the 7th, Sunday at 9.45, the Lady Sunday School class will start back and continue the study of facing your fears with faith. With faith. They're on page 55. Uh, June the 14th, Sunday at 10, New Sunday with our youth teaching, being ushers and singing. Brother Jacob Dunn will be preaching. Uh, that evening will be a reception for our seniors in the fellowship hall. Each senior will have a table setting and a place to put cards and gifts. Please bring finger foods. Come and honor the following students. Tara Riddle, Paula Potter, Adrian Kessler, Logan Pryor, Carson Wilburn. In special prayer, continue to pray for Marvin, Martin Schrader. Martin Schrader. And pray for the Durham family and the passing of Virginia Durham. She was a charter member of Calvary Baptist. Uh, any other announcement that we need to make at this time? All right, then we'll do some more singing. Number 228, number 228 in the church hymnal, number 228. I will sing the word this morning. <laughs> Thank you. 
I need my two ushers to come forward. We're going to do something a little different this morning. We'll take up our missionary offering tonight. But what we're going to do is, um, who's helping? All right. When, when y'all come down for the regular offering, then we're going to turn around. And instead of taking up our missionary offering, we're going to turn around and take up uh, the evangelist offering after that, Brother Keith Allison. So we've been mentioning it for two weeks, the evangelist that uh, he hasn't been able to do nothing for two and a half months now, all his meetings. We thought we would help him. Today's that day. If you can give anything toward that, that'll be good. If you can't, that's fine. But the first one we're going to take up is our tithe and offering. And then the second one we'll take up is instead of the missionaries, it will go to Brother Keith Allison. All right. Brother, go ahead. Lord, thank you, Sailor. Thank you for bringing us to your house again. Thank you, Lord. Uh, God, I pray that you open our hearts and ears Amen. shake the hand of the man that shook the hand of the man that um, <laughs> led me to the Lord. And um, and it went on and said a bunch of other verses kind of like that. And, um, you know, I'm so glad that God loves me. And, yeah, me. Yeah, me. and um, you me know, too. I just pray that um, I'll be obedient in everything that he wants me to be in every, and go every place that he wants me to go yeah. because you never know that you might miss the opportunity to lead someone to Christ. Um, I'm glad that when I was six years old that um, <laughs> he saved me yeah. in a little town in Higgins, oh, Florida, yeah. um, in a high school gymnasium. And he sent a, a guy, I don't even know who he is. I, I'm assuming he was a great uh, preacher. I've read about him. Um, 
But I'm glad that he was obedient and following God's will. And we need to be obedient and following his will. singing and everybody that gave you to Brother Keith this morning, I want to thank you for giving. Yeah. And for the ones that couldn't, you just didn't have it to give, man, I thank you for just being you. I honestly thank God. God will supply everything Brother Keith needs. And uh, man, I want to thank God for our church. I, I enjoyed seeing Brother Billy and his wife. Good to have them here. If y'all are wondering, you better believe I'd have got him to preach this morning, but he says he'll probably have to get up and go a little early. When he said that, I knew it was over with and I couldn't ask him. <laughs> so, um, he's my friend. He's been this church's pastor for almost 10 years. I praise God for the work that he's done. Amen. And I'm glad they're here with us, brother. Amen. I love you to death. Amen. And I praise God and thank God for giving me a friend like you. I mean that. That just ain't saying because you're here. I mean that. I tell everybody that. But anyway, turn in your Bibles. Hebrews chapter 13. For the church that's listening in this morning on live stream. Uh, man, I, I hope that you get something this morning. I hope that you enjoyed the church service. And I want you to know that we miss you. We love you. Stay safe. Just enjoy the Lord today. Open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 13, verses 10 through 14. Now, I'd like to preach on the thought of there's two views of the Christian life from Christians. That's what I'd like to preach on this morning. Kind of be 
It's going to be kind of weird, so just strap up. You know me. Y'all don't want to vote me in. It's your fault. Mm. The Bible said in verse 10, Hebrews 13, verse 10, We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Lord, this morning, I sure love my Bible. God, I thank you that you took man's hand, pinned it down. Lord, you made it simple enough that the common man might be able to read it, learn something about you, be convicted and drawn, Lord, by the Holy Spirit, right up to the throne room of grace. God, I remember the first time I was convicted by the Word of God. Lord, I remember the day that I got saved. Thank you, Lord, for not giving in and giving up on me. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I want you to first understand the book of Hebrews. Uh, it don't say who the author is. Of course, it's most of us probably believe it was probably Paul that wrote it. But it's that's no big deal. It was written uh, to the Hebrews. Uh, and it didn't say the Israelites, it said the Hebrews to make sure that it took these saved Jews all the way back to the covenant that was first made with Abraham, the first Hebrew. And so, yes, it is the Israelites, but they're, he's trying to take their mind all the way back to that covenant that they've been trying to live under uh, and the, the, the promise that they've been having and trying to teach them that they got something better yeah. than that. Yeah. Uh, the whole book of Hebrews is all a, a better, and he keeps yeah. telling them that. In chapter 7, they have a better hope. In, in chapter 7, verse 22, they have a better testament. In 8, 6, they've got a better covenant. And, and again, in verse 8, 6, they got a better promise. In, in 9, 23, they got a better sacrifice. In, wow. in 10, 34, they got a better substance. Yeah, and in 11, verse 16, they got a better country. In 11, 35, they got a better resurrection. Yeah. And in 11, 40, they got better things in the new covenant. In the New Testament, well, what Jesus done on the cross of Calvary beats out the law. It beats out the Judaism Amen. religion. It beats out the, the temple. And it beats out the Old Testament priests. Man, they got something so much better. But because of their raising and for years and years and thousands of years, a servant under the law of Moses, uh, they just kept having a pull to go back to the old ways and the old religion and the old covenant. And he's telling them, don't go back. Don't go back. We got something better than being inside the gate or inside the camp. It's on the outside yeah. of the camp. He's yeah. telling them. Let us yeah. go out to him. He's a better on the outside of the camp. I want to read, uh, if you'll turn in your Bible, back to Hebrew chapter 10. Just a couple of pages. And, and I want to read 1 through 12. And y'all, I'm trying. Y'all know me. I'm a trying. I'm not as long-winded as Brother Billy, but I'm trying <laughs> to be a little shorter today. <laughs> Verse 10, I mean, chapter 10, verse 1. All right, now, I want you to understand this is some good stuff here. Now. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things. Can you get any plainer than that? What's a shadow? I looked it up. It's a dark spot made by something solid that's passing through the rays of light. Jesus Christ is the main thing in everything. Amen. In everything. God shining his light and that he is the light of the world. We understand him on him and it casts a shadow. And that's how we get the pictures of Jesus Christ through the Old Testament. Yes. Amen. If you didn't get that, it helped me anyway. I will say this. 
That shadow can never take away our sin. <laughs> we needed that real thing. But anyway, let me move on. Let's see. The very image of the thing can never, with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year continually, make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. But in no sacrifice there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away the sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure, had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of a book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do the will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice yes. for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Thank God we got something better yeah. than going out and bringing in a lamb or a bull or a goat or a pigeon or a dove and sacrificing. Uh, there was one that come 2,000 years ago, hung and died on the cross, took his blood up to heaven in the temple, uh, presented it before the Lord. Yeah. And if you will call on him, that blood will cover your sins yeah. once one time for all sin, Amen. past Amen. and present and future. Man, I thank God for that. Not living where I got to do something every day. I'm living by the grace of God and what he's done for me. You're talking about victory. Yeah. You're talking about liberty, being set free. Man, that's done it. I don't have to worry about it. Man, I, I started studying this thing a little bit and got overwhelmed in it. But man, it was good to me. I want, to, I want you to look at verse 10 and verse 11. We'll quickly move on. We have an altar. That's the saved ones now. The Hebrew saved people here he's talking to. The Jewish man that was living under the Hebrew uh, covenant, the, the Mosaic law and everything that they're supposed to do. I mean, they was living under that for all that time. And then God graciously saved them. And they was fighting whether to go back to it. Man, I've lost out. And he says, you have an altar. We have an altar which they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. And in the verse 12, for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. If you take them two verses and you study them down, it'll take you all the way back to Leviticus chapter 3 and Leviticus chapter 4. Leviticus would tie into verse 10 here. Leviticus 3 would, and it's called the peace offering. And that offering there they would bring in, and it had to be. Uh, it had to be the blood of a bull. Or, and they'd bring him in, and they would lay their hands on him, identifying themselves, put that, that bull becoming uh, their sin and carrying their sin. And then they would have to cut it, catch the blood, and then he'd turn around and go take it to the altar, put it on the horns of the altar, pour the blood on it, and then flay the thing out, and then take the fat and everything. We're not going to get into it, and they'd put it in the altar. And then they would throw the ham, all the rest of it on there. And there, and in the peace offering, then they would take them flesh hooks and reach in there and grab them some meat and pull it out, and they would feast on the sacrifice. Amen. Can I tell you that Christ, when he died on the cross, he become our peace offering. Amen. We should be feasting on him. Amen. But that ain't all what it is. 
Then you look in, in verse 11, for the bodies of those beasts which, uh, whose blood is brought into the sanctuary. Uh, the peace offering wasn't brought into the sanctuary, uh, but the sin offering was, and it brought into the sanctuary by the high priest of sin are burned without the camp. They'd take, it, they'd take that bull and they'd bring him before the tabernacle and they'd do the same thing, put the hands on him, slice his throat, catch the blood, except it'd be a little, little different when it comes to the sin offering. They'd take the blood inside the sanctuary before the veil and the priest would dip his finger into the blood uh, seven times. He would sprinkle it before the veil. Then he'd go back out there to the altar and then and, and put it on the horns of the altar and pour the rest in the bottom of the altar and then they would cut out and flay that bull out and, or, or the lamb out and, and they would flay it out and they would cut out certain parts of the kidneys and the fat and the caul and they would cut it all out and burn it. But you understand, the sin offering was the one that became vile and, 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 and puke and petri, putrid and nasty and nobody wanted. You couldn't eat from that. It was nasty, just like your sin, just like our sin. It's nasty. Christ hung on, on the cross and become our sin. And because of that, he had to be taken to the outside of the camp. He couldn't have been, been inside. And so, uh, man, I want you to understand this thing is cut all to pieces and cut up and, and just mutilated and nasty. And they take it outside and burn it. He said, he said, wherefore, I want you now to look at verse 4. And that went along with Leviticus chapter 4. Now I want you to read verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also. Now that's a picture of what the real substance was going to take place mm -hmm. on the cross of Calvary. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people. That's me and you. That's anybody that wants to be saved. That's a whosoever. That he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. The Bible said, let us go forth unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. I want to get a little bit into verse 12 before I get into the main content of the sermon. And then we'll be done. We've heard the cross of Calvary preach so much that we've done gone callous to it. We've done heard how they beat him with the can of nine tails. We've done heard how they hung him on the cross. And so when we talk about the cross, of Cal the cross of Calvary and what Jesus went through and what he did for us, we go, oh, they know they took a cross. And that's about all we think about it. But I want you to understand if you could have seen the picture of that bullock as he was being cut up, if you could have seen the amount of blood that was being just, just, messed all up and tore all up and being caught and being sprinkled and being poured. If you could just picture how they filleted it back and how they would have to cut him open and how they would have to get in there to the kidneys and then get the fat that's around the kidneys and around the innards and then have to get the fat that was around the hand parts of the body, the Bible said. They would have to cut it all back and get to it all. What a mangled up pile of mess that that bull went through to be able to get that blood that it might be able to put on the horns of the altar and that his blood might be able to be put on in the altar. And then, and then, and then, and then when it become that nasty and that vile that it just made people turn away because he was so mangled up and cut up uh, that they turned their back on it and they would drag it out. And while they're dragging it out, they said that the people would literally look the other way because it just looked so nasty. Well, I know how kind of that is, all of us that's deer hunted and, and rabbit hunted and squirrel hunted all our life. And we'd take a squirrel or, or a deer and we would flay him open and, and get rid of the innards and, and cut it up and then flay it up and then cut it in little pieces. How nasty it starts looking. If you wait too long, it starts smelling. And if you nick something, boy, good night. If you shoot one, oh man, it's just nasty. And so the smell of it, the stench of it, and we've done grown cold and callous to the cross of Calvary. But I'm here to tell you, he was flayed open. Yes. yes. Right. The 
Bible said he didn't even look like a man. Right. I mean, he's beat in the face so much uh, that it's swollen and eyes are shut. And, uh, and uh, you couldn't even tell his beard was plucked out to where it was bleeding. Uh, the crown of uh, uh, thorns was placed on his head and then beat down. There was places uh, where the thorns would go into his scalp and then poke back out somewhere else. And we just go like this. Oh, he was hung on the cross of Calvary. I know he was mutilated. Yeah. He was cut up. He was filleted. Right. There was pieces of body hanging off from him. The Bible said that his innards was hanging out and that his bones were staring at him in yeah. Psalms chapter 22. Yeah. Oh, he just didn't hang on the cross. Oh, he had to bear the sin and the marks and the wrath of our sin, of your sin, of your sin. He just didn't hang on the cross. He become filthy and vile and he stunk into God's nostrils. You take it so little. Just hung on the cross. God that was mine to bear that should have been my flesh hanging off of my body that should have been my blood dropping there that should have been my face swollen up and beat up I'm the one that should have been nailed to the cross he did it for me he did it for you I want you to notice the next part that I want to bring out that we ought to think about, not just that. I want to tell you what him becoming the sacrifice meant, what him becoming that sin offering meant. It meant this. Because of his death and his resurrection and my faith in him and what he's done, I'm not stuck in a false religion no more. Amen. I don't have hope in my works. Uh, there's nothing I can do to earn my way to heaven. I don't have to go back to that old religion no more. My sins, past, present, and future are forgiven. I'm sealed for eternity. I'm justified Amen. and have peace with God. I'm not going to be judged for my sin. I'm not condemned. I'm not going to hell. I'm not ever going to be separated from God. I have been made righteous. I'm saved eternally. Amen. I have hope that He's coming Amen. back. I'm not just after y'all, but he's coming back for me. I have liberty that I've never had before. I'm going to heaven. I get to live in the new Jerusalem with my king, with my Lord. Man, I'm excited about it. I'm not going into great tribulation. I don't have to worry about the wrath of God being poured out on my life. I have peace within myself. I have been made a son of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. I have special blessings that I don't even know about yet. Yeah. Tomorrow hasn't even come. I don't know about them, but I'm excited yeah. about them. I'm going to get them. Uh, can yeah. I tell you, I have joy uh, that's unspeakable. I am the bride of Jesus Christ. I have a daily mercy. Daily mercy. Trust me, I run out of that mercy. I wear it out every day, but every day it's renewed. I got that daily mercy. I got daily grace. He gives me daily bread. He supplies my need. I have his presence every day. The Bible said this. He daily loadeth me with benefits. Yeah. I am. I got that and so much more. I'm blessed that only you. I like saying that. One, because I am. <laughs> Brother Billy ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> now I want to get to the message. And I'll be done in just five or seven minutes. I want you, uh, I'm being serious. Everybody's laughing. I heard you. <laughs> Brother James, take care of your wife. <laughs> I want you to look verse 13. And, then, and now I'm going to preach on it. There's two views of the Christian life. From Christians, not from the world. I'm just going to deal with us Christians. There's two views of the Christian life. I'm going to read the first. I'm going to read the verse 13 like one view does, okay? There's one Christian. There are some Christians that will read verse 13 like this. Let us go forth, therefore, without the camp, 
bearing his reproach. All we see is all we'll lose. I'll be on the outside of the camp. I'll lose my comfort. I'll lose my job. I'll lose my friends. I'll be on the outside. I won't be in the inner group. I'll be on the outside. I'll lose my home. I'll lose my family. We see all this stuff I'll lose. And the only thing that I'll gain is reproach. That's how, that's how most Christians look at it. And we'll say, no, we don't. Oh, yes, we do. Let me give you some. Why don't you go to the altar? Oh, uh, God, that uh, might embarrass me. That's because you're still on the inside of the camp. You're not wanting to go outside the camp. Why don't you raise your hands and enjoy what the Lord's doing? Yeah. Man, I just don't know. Uh, somebody might see me. Somebody might make fun of me. I feel stupid. That's because you want to be on the inside of the camp instead of getting to Him. Yeah. Now, that's one of the views. Oh, why don't you go out and knock on the door and tell somebody about the Lord? Man, I don't know. The people around here just don't like it no more. Yeah, but the only way that you're going to get to Him is you've got to get outside the camp. Boy, yeah. yeah. Say, I don't have that. You better let God search your life. Show you how we still hold back on some things. I'm going to go out there but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this with me. I'm going to take that with me. I'm going to load myself up. Because when I get out there, man, it's going to be so miserable, so hard outside the camp. Man, I won't have nothing. I'm going to take a whole bunch of stuff with me. So when I get out there, I, I won't be without nothing. I won't be out there all by myself with nothing. But the real Christian reads the verse like exactly what it says. And then he'll put emphasis at one spot. I want you to read it again. The Bible says this. Let us go forth therefore. This is what I left out. Unto him. Yeah. Unto him. Without the camp. Bearing his reproach. There is one view that will say. One Christian will read it like this. And he'll say. Man I don't know what's going to be out there outside of the camp. But as long as he's there. As long as I find him. I didn't lose a thing. I gained everything. Yeah. There's one of them views that'll sit there and say, man, if, if man, I'm going to go out there to him. Uh, I'm going to go out there and see him. I'm going to go out there and get to talk with him. I'm going to go out there and get to hold his hand. I'm going to get out there and hear his voice. I'm going to get out there and feel his touch. I'm going to get out there and enjoy him and what he's got for me and have the power of God rest on me. I get him. I uh, praise God. I get him. Let's go out. Man, let's get out there. He's out there. And I can't wait to get out there and meet him. I see. Amen. I'm not losing nothing. That's right. I'm gaining everything. Oh, yeah. Man, I'll gladly bear reproach as long as I'm walking with him. If somebody wants to mock me and laugh at me, make fun of me and put me down, as long as he turns around, winks his eye at me, says, man, I'm so proud of you. I'll take it all. Let me ask you this question. How did you read that verse? How's your life going? Yeah. Are you going without the camp? Are you going to the outside to try to find him? Are you trying to get out there? Or are you seeing all that you might lose? Here, I want you to go play something. If I don't, I'll keep preaching. How's your view of the Christian life? Well, James, how's your view of the Christian life? Man, I'll forsake the whole camp if I just get him. Or is it like... Man, he's out there. And I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad you died for me, Jesus. I'm glad you took my pain and my shame. I'm glad you bear it all. But I sure thank you for the camp you gave me. Him looking back from outside the camp going, yeah. when am I going to be better than the camp? Ain't it a shame 
that the cross of Calvary has done God so callous that we don't think we'll go find him. What he done ain't good enough to get up and to go find him. Ain't the blessings that we give us because of what come through the cross of Calvary, the crucifixion and the benefits that we got, ain't that good enough to drive us to the outside of the camp to get to him? Yeah. But we still stop short. I'll never be nothing. I'll always be a mess up. So I'm not going to go after him. He deserves better than me. You know what that is? It's saying you'd rather be that than having him. Church, would you please stay? Let us go forth. Therefore, and our main purpose unto him. Nothing else matters. He shouldn't have had to put the rest in there outside the camp. He shouldn't even have to say bear and approach because it don't matter as long as we got him. Where are you at, church? What are you doing? Go ahead and sing a song. Feel like coming praying. He's all I need. Yes. When I just need. She is a charter member. These flowers here were put in her honor. Uh, thank God for the ones years ago that said that we will start a church. Yeah. Because of them, them few that got together and said, man, God's telling us to start a church. Brother Billy, we got the pastor here. I got the pastor here. And the church is still going strong. People are still being saved. So y'all, y'all, uh, Y'all, y'all could, y'all, if y'all can, go out there. If you can't, that's fine too. 
But if you can, support the family and honor them. Anything else that I need to mention? They still in allowing visitors up there. Nobody. Uh, I, I'm sorry. We'll be praying. Don't forget to pray for Brother Wendell Friday. He's having surgery. Don't forget to pray for Miss Phyllis. Miss Phyllis, we missed you. She usually tunes in when she can't be here. The stitches that she has, y'all be praying for her. Anybody else? All right. We love y'all. We'll see y'all tonight at six. We have a missionary back here tonight. Uh, so if y'all can, come on by. Thank you. Let me close out in prayer, and I won't go to the back. Lord, this morning, we thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for how you blessed us. We thank you, Lord, for how you took our sin. Lord, you was put on the outside. Lord, I, I am blessed more than I'll ever even understand. Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch and help this one that's in the hospital. God, I pray that you would supply their need, Lord, that you would watch out over them. Lord, I pray that you'd touch the family, give them the grace that they need to be able to keep, um, uh, be able to bear what they're fixing to go through. Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch Brother Wendell. Lord, I pray that you would help the doctors. Lord, I pray that you would use it. Uh, Lord, that there might be some help given. Lord, I also pray for Miss Phyllis today as she's home. Lord, I pray that your arm to heal up. Let her know that we missed her and all the rest of them that's not here. Lord, comfort the family of the Durhams today. Strengthen and encourage them. Lord, we love you. We thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See